Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the great white shark of <laughs> South Florida Auction Arenas, Mr. Rich Meyer. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Very nice. Remind me of that. Okay, I'm going to take this down because I'm not a stander and a talker. I'm a walker. My name is Rich Meyer. And yes, it's true. I was a shark at the sale. I'm going to tell you some stories about it that will make some of you guys' skin crawl. Secondly, if any of you have ever been to the sale, you didn't get a property the way you wanted, it's probably because of someone like myself. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, and we're going to have a little fun at the same time. First of all, I'm going to tell you an online auction story. Happened very recently. Once upon a time, there was a New York investor. Imagine that, a New York investor down here in Florida. He wanted to buy a Miami Beach condo. Makes sense, right? For the right dollar. The plaintiff's high bid was $13,000. Now, let me explain to you what that means. That means on the auction site right now, the online auction site in Dade County, the plaintiff, who's the bank, has the option to let the investor know or hide their high bid. That's the plaintiff's option. We as investors don't have the option. We have to play with what they give us. So in this instance, the plaintiff's high bid was 13000 And as far as I know, it was uncovered. So everybody knew it was 13000 That's as high as the plaintiff is going to go on this property is 13000 Everybody clear with that? You have to be clear to understand the rest of the story. The New York investor prevailed at $95,600. A lot of money. A lot of money on top of that, a lot of money more, a lot of money, did I say that? A lot more money than was the, than was the high bid of the plaintiff. So what does this number tell us? That number tells me, first of all, that there was at least one additional bidder bidding up our New York investor, right? Makes sense. Because the New York investor is not going to go all the way to 95.6. Somebody drove them that high. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so we know that there's at least one other investor. I'm going to suggest there were more. I'm going to suggest there was probably three or four guys chasing them up, $100 at a time. The value of the condo was $200,000. Not a bad deal, right? My guess is the majority of us in this room would take that right now on its face. That's, of course, if I didn't finish the story. Thanks to Paul Harvey, and now the rest of the story. This purchase was subject to a $265,000 first mortgage. Oh my gosh. Now here, here's, here's how I envision this happening. The guy's at the, the, guy's at the house, because you can bid online. So he's in his New York apartment. This is the way I figure it. He's in his New York apartment, and his wife is looking over his shoulder, and he gets a $200,000 uh, unit for $95,000 and change. He's hysterically crazy. Honey, call my mother, call my sister. Let's tell the people we're all going down at Easter time to see my new condo that I paid $95,000 that's worth $200,000. They're celebrating this in their house. They gotta be. I would be. You would. I know you would, Jose. My God, you call everybody. <laughs> anyway, so let's do some of the math. 95 6 is what he paid. He bought a condo lien at the sale subject to a first mortgage. So there's that liability, $265,000. Total investment he's got to cover now is three hundred sixty dollars Oh, boy, I wish we didn't call your sister and tell her how great I did on that one. She's never going to let me forget it. For a condo valued at $200,000, yikes. My goodness. That's a tough pill to swallow. Now, my guess is this guy is probably not bidding right now. He's probably licking his wounds. And what has happened is the rest of the story goes is he didn't lose the full 95000 He hired some attorneys. They came to town. They met with the condo association. Long story short, he's out twenty grand for a huge mistake that was correctable. He didn't have to do this, but he did. So we're going to try and prevent that from happening to any of us. Just by being aware that this is out there, it's going to help you. So what went wrong? The investor applied New York law. Now I know there's lawyers in here that know New York law, and I'm just going to use my little version of it tonight. 
Um, New York law, when you buy the foreclosure sale, as far as I know, you buy it with all the liens extinguished. So this guy being from New York, figured that the foreclosure laws were the same in Florida, so he bought it and thought that it extinguished all the liens, and it did not. That's the first mistake. The second mistake is he didn't understand how Florida laws apply to condo liens and to homeowner association liens. And that ugly two-worded sentence, subject to. And if you've ever bought a share of sale, you buy subject to. You buy a condo lien, you buy subject to, just the way it is. Fail to complete or obtain a title search. A title search is not a bad word. You can learn to do a title search in less than 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes, not to learn, but once you learn, you can do one yourself in less than 10 minutes. I'll show you how to do that. 